Goosebumps Horror Land. This is a game based on the popular horror series for kids. From what I've read, the books aren't really about dying, but having people in frightening situations. The game does a good job of keeping that feel alive. The story is about a bunch of kids who get a free ticket to a horror themed park. And once they get in, they can't leave. That fact doesn't seem to bother the characters at all, as they only make a passing reference to it. You would think that would be a huge plot point, but it's really not. They just go about having fun in the park. As you travel through the park, you'll unfold the story of a mysterious young girl and this weird park. You'll travel through different themed areas of the park. If you read the book series, they're all based off of those descriptions of the locations in the book, at least according to Wikipedia. Since I've never read any of these books, I'm just going to have to take their word on it. Each of the 30 attractions take tokens to ride them. These tokens can be pretty much found anywhere, from light poles to trash cans. It was very easy to find tokens, which begs the question, why bother to have tokens at all? Now don't get me wrong, while I appreciate them not being stingy with tokens, like Wonder World Amusement Park, I think making them too easy to get is also a problem. When you win extra tokens in a game, it's really not exciting at all. You'll just shrug your shoulders and not care one bit. On some of the rides, you'll need a certain fright level in order to ride it. You'll earn frights by completing a certain objective in the attraction you're riding. In each of these attractions, you can get up to three different frights, bronze, silver, and gold. It is possible to get all three in one try. Some of the attractions don't have any restrictions, but normally those are the most tame and easiest to do. Later on, the more complicated rides will take quite a few frights to get on. The controls in the game were okay. They did keep it simple. Using the Wiimote as a light gun was pretty common in this game, but they also make you pound your Wiimote down in a test of strength or spinning it around in an anchor throw. And that's just a few of the examples. While most of the time the controls work adequately, there was one game in particular that felt like the controls were completely broken. Horrorland Derby. You make an underhand tossing motion with your Wiimote to roll a ball, but it would only read it about 10% of the time. Most of the time you'd be making the gestures and nothing would happen. This was extremely problematic in this game seeing how you're playing against other people. The worlds that you had to travel in were mostly fun to look at, but the camera was locked in place, so often you would get lost due to the poor camera angles. It helped that there were signs all over to point you in the direction of the attraction you wanted to ride, but full control of the camera would have made the game less aggravating to navigate in. Also, the worlds, while fun to look at, were sometimes too distracting. When I had to travel through this swamp, I would often not be able to tell the difference between somewhere I could walk and a background image. The attractions themselves looked nice, and a few of them were actually fun to replay. A good example of that was a game called Calamity Canyon. The setup of the ride was that it was just a normal roller coaster. The game would get more challenging the more you get into it, because every time you lapped it, more of it would fall apart, and you would have to twist, turn, and duck your head more and more through the treacherous track. There are also plenty of hidden cards to find throughout the park. If you complete a certain goal in an area or an attraction, you'll be awarded a card. It's just a fun idea if you enjoy a challenge of collecting all the cards. There is also a multiplayer option. You can choose to play the mini games that you've already unlocked. Goosebumps Horrorland. It's not for too young a kids, with its emphasis on devils and demons. But I think a kid above the age of eight could enjoy this game for its simple controls and interesting story. So I think this game is worth a rent.